Mori and all uh, this thank you for joining our Be Women Weekly Dialogues. These webinars where we share, we learn on impact leadership and get inspired to real action. I'm Laura Jadarukoc, founder of Be Women, lawyer in the state of New York and Argentina. Super, super passionate about the B Corp movement of using business as a force for good. Before we get started, a few words on who we are. Be Women. We are a global network of women entrepreneurs that seek to balance purpose and profits in the market towards economies of care, where people and environment are our key focus, where our values, respect, dignity, collaboration are our driving forces. In the next 50 minutes, you will hear about authentic, sustainable fashion, a shift in social and environmental norms. With our most inspiring and admired Adriana Marina, CEO of Hecho por Nosotros and Animana, and our amazing moderator, Josh Williams, Associate Director of Fashion Management of the Parsons School of Design. So before we get started, I want to share with you one more thing is the Be Women Empowering Move. So we can get all to listen this webinar and get empowered to real action after you hear this. So it goes like this, move your shoulders back, chin up, Make your eyes twinkle with joy and determination and with a super wide smile, illuminate everybody around you. And with a super wide smile, Josh, the line is all yours. Please start the call. Thank you so much, Laura, for having us. It's such a pleasure to be here from New York City today and to be able to moderate this conversation with Adriana. Can you all hear me? We're good? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. So I know that um, Adriana uh, spent quite some time in developing a, a beautiful uh, deck. And I think um, in our conversations in preparation for today's conversation, we thought it would make sense to uh, use that as a way to have this conversation because there's so many wonderful visuals. And in fact, there's so much information I think that we want to impart to you today, uh, not only about um, Animana and Hechos por Nosotros, but also about sustainability in general. And as Lara said, we really want to think about how this affects um, each of you as customers and potentially as part of, uh, for those of you who are part of the industry. So I wanted to, if we can, um, Laura, are you going to turn on the, the uh, PowerPoint? There we go. There we go. Wonderful. We go. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and I. Okay. Perfect. So let's let's, if we can, um, move to the uh, slide about the mission of Animana. And Adriana, why don't you tell us just a little bit, just to get us started, about what Animana is and what your mission is. Well. Well, hello to all and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Joshua. Um, well, my, my dream uh, was to, con to contribute for a systemic change in a way. So I think it's very important each of us showing our story and our experiences as part of what we have to do and contribute to this world. I was born in Patagonia, uh, surrounded for that, about this so uh, beautiful nature. And uh, at the same time, I was part of seeing uh, the long process, time and efforts that takes uh, to get a natural fiber of good quality in order to be exported to the world. And how didn't uh, leave um, part of that uh, goodness to local people. This, uh, I think, uh, this uh, like a short story, if we can extrapolate it, part of the big problems we have around the world, how we are disconnected. Uh, so uh, with that in my heart, in my mind, all my life, I am an economist, a researcher, a social entrepreneur all my life. I decided uh, like 11 years ago to put hands on giving a solution. And for that, I create Animana. Animana is a B Corp, a social business that 
joints, uh, artisans, natural fibers, all across the Andes, and introduced design as a way to create contemporary uh, designs and, and garments and clothing that can be used every day in a warehouse. <clears throat> At the same time, as an economist, I decided to join all these experiences that we uh, got with Animana, working with the people, with the producers, with the small and medium uh, brands, in order to um, understand these bottlenecks, this, 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 sorry, <laughs> this, uh, these connections, yes, these links that are uh, broken. And for that is that um, we create a huge network of economists, professionals, designers, all working together uh, on these issues and understanding how this fashion industry uh, moves, how, uh, which is uh, the impact of this industry and how can we convert it in a force for good. So uh, this is Animana, and hecho por nosotros, and you're all very welcome. <laughs> W wonderful, thank you. It's a good way to get us started. I think um, as I want to sort of shift back now and talk a little bit about what the fashion industry looks like today. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, the current fashion industry paradigm is, is rather um, global in context. It's very complex and typically uh, any sort of garment, including a five to $10 t-shirt that we might buy at Forever 21, uh, or at Uniqlo uh, takes about two to three continents before it reaches us where we are going to buy it. And I, I think uh, that a lot of consumers don't really truly understand how many people touch that t-shirt before we buy it. And then of course, most of us don't think too much about where that t-shirt goes, but you've uh, taken the time to put together a few facts that I think are quite interesting about the current fashion industry. Uh, do you want to take us through a few of the, of the key points on this slide about um, you know how the the current industry is, is how we sort of approach the current industry? Yes. Uh, well, I, I think uh, it's amazing the this the effect that uh, this industry um, has in in the environment and social. Uh, area of our society and um, for example if we we want uh, to see some numbers 12% uh, of the fashion brands are interested in paying uh, their workers more than a minimum wage mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. much of the workers are informally employed and in this area is so important at be women to remark the role of women, no? because this is an industry consumed by women and produced by women. But the women that produce are in the very uh, low part of the uh, economic uh, area. And we are, uh, I think it's so important that women awake, how can we uh, be part of this a transformation of the society. Uh, now that there is such a huge movement to empower women, uh, I think the, we need each, each of us to be empowered inside to, to think our, um, our actions, no? And at the same time, this fashion industry is leader. 80% of men are leaders in this industry and 80% of women are the workers that they work in very, very bad condition, conditions. Um, the emissions uh, of polyester productions uh, amounted to the output of 185 coal plants in 2050. Uh, if we think just a cotton shirt takes 2,700 liters of water. This is impressive and just one, no? 
And also, many times we talk about uh, um, uh, organic cotton, but when we uh, dye a shirt, we are also also producing a, a damage to the to the environment so so big. No, uh, the cotton uh, that is a, a, a fiber worldwide use uh, employs. 17% uh, of world pest pesticides. And uh, if we think in production, uh, this industry, in, because of the, the phenomenon of the fashion, the fast fashion, is growing uh, uh, exponentially. And at the same time, the rate of use is diminishing. Yes, 40% of the total production of this fast fashion is never used and goes to garbage, to the oceans. Um, uh, it's really, really uh, interesting to go into this number in order to associate this with our consume. Yes, because of course, if you do not know what is behind each of the clothes, the garment, the piece you are um, buying, difficult is uh, to, um, to think what you are doing. For that, it's so important to, to work on awareness and preparing and training people in order to be each of us an advocate in, in sustainable fashion. It's so interesting, two points. I think I was very excited about this particular forum um, because it is driven uh, by women for women. And I think your point that the fashion industry uh, includes 80% women uh, employees, mostly informally employed, as you said, um, that's such an astounding number. And I think A, it, it shows the power that potentially women have to make change, but also um, how much the fashion industry pushes against women in not such a great way. Um, I think we, we typically focus on the glamour of fashion and we don't really think about uh, the other pieces. And I want to point out that sustainability is often a big, big term. And I'm glad that um, as you're talking today, Adriana, you're talking not only about sort of the environment, which is what we typically associate with sustainability, but also the human resources that we have. It's, this, this really is a very human-centric industry and it takes so many people to make the clothes that we have. And yet very rarely are we talking about the women, wherever they might be, who are making these clothes usually for a very low wage. And I wanna to move to the next slide because I think um, you point, you make a, a bigger point here in terms of, um, you mentioned earlier that uh, so much of the clothes that go to the waste aren't even worn. It's actually new stock that never gets purchased and it goes directly uh, to uh, the dump. And that's in large part because we have so much more clothing being made now than 20 years ago. I know as a professor, I, I work with so many young people who want to get into the industry and start their own brands. And that's very exciting. There's a lot of entrepreneurship. But at the same time, I have to wonder, are, do we need yet another brand in the world? <laughs> so can you speak to that a little bit? Because I know part of your goal, and I think you can speak to this slide as well, is to do business you know, differently because, in fact, there's just too much of these things out there in the world. Yes, um, I think this this uh, industry and our behavior. You know, because I think when we say the industry, if we it seems that um, it's other people, yes, are these giants. And the theme is each of us. Uh, we are part of that. And the the second theme is that it's so hard uh, to go out from this trap. Yes but I think we, we can do it. Um, if, we, um, if we begin uh, thinking this fashion industry as a way of uh, a force of good, for example, like uh, taking all these uh, sustainable development goals as a network, yes, that has been constructed and proposed by United Nations so good, in order to see each of them how this industry is doing things today, are doing these things, we are doing these things today, and how can we transform it in a force for good, yes? 
And one of the, the, the theme is this uh, 190... Uh, thousand. Uh, eh? thousand. <laughs> thousand tons of microplastic fibers. Here is Pablo with me. <laughs> um, that are going to the ocean, yes, and um, it's it's equivalent to uh, five. The, the numbers are so so enormous that and so impressionant. Uh, Fifty billions uh, of uh, bottles, plastic bottles, that every year this industry uh, gives uh, to the ocean. It's it's impressionant, and. Um, for that, uh, also, we have to think all the, the pieces that are not, uh, are not good to sell, because this industry, I think that one, one of the main characteristics is that um, as this uh, asymmetry of information uh, between how it's made, where, uh, by whom, uh, how was the impact and uh, the, the consumers, yes, is so big, was so big all this year when we began 12 years ago uh, making research, analyzing, and we, we were giving seminars and talking about this, oh, you are crazy, what they are saying. Uh, looks like it, it is an industry that uh, was hard uh, to go inside and to to get uh, the information and to get the conscious of what was going on, no? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think uh, in this moment uh, we have to the power in order to ask these big brands around the world what they do. For example, in Paris there was a huge moment, a movement in order to request big brands what they will do with all the uh, pieces that they will not sell, yes? Because everywhere uh, in the world, in, in each second, we have um, one garbage truck textiles that is weighted, yes? So imagine, this, this is impressionant. Uh, how and, and things that we will never use. For example, London and United Kingdom now is working hard on this theme, mostly because of the uh, environmental impact that they have of the, the clothes and all these pieces stack that they, they give all these toxics and, and, and pollute the environment and the health of people. And this is another big point, the health. We are taking all these uh, materials in our skin and we breathe by our skin. So what, what we are doing, what we are doing, how can we be press, let's say, about this marketing that is uh, growing and growing and uh, we that are the, the human being, are, we are the species with more intelligence, since. <laughs> and I think we have everything today, so many tools that I, we also created, but we have to use it differently. And I think the, that this is the important uh, thing to to get uh, conscious and awareness about what we are doing, how, and how can we uh, live more friendly with other people, with environment, with our resources, and also think about uh, young people. I am uh, so uh, enthusiastic about how young professionals around the world of course, they are so uh, worried about the world that we are living them. So uh, they are doing uh, efforts and contributing and working in another way. And I think uh, we that are in another age and another state of uh, power, let's say, 
it's a, a huge responsibility that we have to create a space, a spaces where they can develop uh, themselves and take out all these potential and tools that they have in order to create a, another system that should be totally uh, different. I think we have to go outside of growing, 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 growth, and we need to grow more each of us and together. It's astounding. I just heard a number that approximately six, uh, every uh, customer in the United States has 60 square feet of retail space that's just theirs. Uh, so we, we certainly, ha we have our own stores basically of, of, of stock full of clothing that, that we'll never wear. So I think let's move to the next slide so that we can kind of get a sense of how Animana um, and how you sort of work with Hechos Con Nosotros. Um, you've been doing this for, for over 10 years now. Can you talk a little bit about this? And then I want to go to your next slide quickly to talk about sort of the current value chain. And then we can kind of go through a little bit more specifically how you as a company, as an organization approach uh, sustainability. Well, as I was uh, saying, I um, went back to my roots with uh, the, the lessons I had in life. And so I decided to create a brand in order to uh, propose things differently. And that each piece of Animana uh, takes this message around the world. For that, I uh, went to a very difficult task that is uh, working with the natural fibers producers. Uh, we have in the Andes, in Latin America, these camelids that alpaca, vicuña, guanaco, lama, are the most finest fibers of the world. We have merino uh, as well, the merino wool. And at the same time, we see how producers, yes, and communities that they uh, own all this, it's a property, all this culture, all this way of uh, interchanging with resources, they uh, are just um, without a bridge and with a voice with the industry uh, fashion. For that, I create like a huge network all across Latin America in order to get partners that we are our providers that are these communities, families, cooperatives, small and medium friends all across Andes, they become partners of Animana and we work together. So in Animana, we only use natural fibers. And uh, at the same time, we have a production of, of durable garments, let's say, long lasting. This sweater has a lot of years. I love it. Uh, more years uh, uh, went by and I love more my Animana sweaters. And this is uh, the, the message of a slow consumption, of a consumption of things of quality that gives us another quality of life, another pleasure, and they are so long lasting, yes? The other point at Animana is a direct engagement with the base of the value chain, as I said, uh, in order uh, that all the bottlenecks, all the problems that they have, we together will co-create solutions in order to create capacity building locally. And they are uh, reinforced and more strong in order to attend Animana and many other uh, clients and brands, not, not just us. And also locally that they usually they have opportunities of uh, tourists or local fairs, they go with another uh, kind of tool of empower. Yes, and this is so nice, but uh, it's a hard, has been a, a hard work, very long, and um, in all this year, jointly with Hecho por Nosotros, where we learned of these bottlenecks and we create and co-create in a collaborative way, enormous quantity of tools, yes, 
in order to uh, fill up all these gaps and all these problems locally, we have trained more than 7,000 artisans in all the Andean and Patagonian region. And at the same time, Hecho por Nosotros uh, makes continuously uh, research, academic research, and uh, advocacy locally um, in all Latin America and international. Every international fair I was going, I went to spaces of universities, foundations that were working uh, with us from the beginning, like Ethical Fashion Show, Ethical Fashion Forum in London, that now is common objective. Uh, we were partners as brand and as hecho por nosotros. And including all the time designers, schools of designers with all this culture. So this is a very virtuous uh, circle that really gives a voice for a systemic change. And I think it's so important uh, to remark this work, although, of course, it's a slowly, it's long, and takes a lot out of energy to, to grow a brand international. That was uh, one of my, my big problems, let's say, to put so much effort in the base of the platform, in this message, in working uh, around and fertilizing. And of course, the fashion industry goes just ignoring all this part and just making uh, marketing. And, and nowadays, more and more, this is happening. So their investment is all in something that Janimana never arrives <laughs> to invest. <laughs> and, but well, we are so, so uh, happy and this is what we would like to do, no? And I am uh, confident that in time all this uh, will, will grow and grow and of course Animana is growing, has a, a stable model of functioning um, well, <laughs> you make it, it's so interesting because I think uh, if we can move to the next slide, uh, part of the uh, problem with sustainability or the conversation around sustainability in many ways has been that it's been focused in a very uh, niche way, meaning everyone's sort of doing their own thing. And of course, there's there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, is that the fashion supply chain is so complex. Yeah. that a change that you might make uh, that might be more sustainable, let's say as a designer, uh, might actually have unsustainable effects further down the supply chain. And I love this particular slide. This sort of shows what the fashion system looks like right now, where you have uh, your disenchantized uh, artisans. You could also say, even at the lower level, people who are just literally manufacturing goods um, yeah. without even really knowing what they're going to look like. You have your brands in the middle, right, that are, are sort of uh, creating uh, the brand, creating the product, and then they're sort of the managers of uh, these clothes and distribution. And then it goes to the retailers and these consumers who are often buying clothes that they have no idea where they were made, how much it costs to make them, or what the implications are of that, um, of that sort of value chain. And I think um, there's been a lot of conversation about how do we create more transparency uh, in fashion, but it's very difficult because you go all the way from the materials to the person who makes it, and then it might even go to a different factory where the buttons are sewn on, and then it might go to a different factory where uh, you know uh, the trim is put on, and then it goes uh, and gets distributed, and it might end up in two continents before it ends up, let's say, in Europe or in the United States. So it becomes very, uh, very complex and very difficult to do. And I'm, uh, I want to move to the next slide so that you, Adriana, can kind of talk about how uh, there needs to be a shift in the value chain um, that starts to look at things more sustainably and more interconnectedly, because the reality is, is we can't all just be working in our own sort of compartments. We all have to be working together. And I think what's so interesting uh, about what you're doing is that you're saying we want to design a brand, but in order to have the system in place that's also sustainable, we actually have to train manufacturers, women, artisans, how to actually be part of that system. Otherwise they're left out and there's really no 
uh, change at the ground level. So can you talk a little bit about this slide and how you see this system as being more sustainable? Yes. Well, and, and in this point, I think that this uh, movement of sustainability that is going on more like a propaganda is not uh, like very serious in taking part of these big solutions we have to take, yes? Mm -hmm. And also I see how propaganda now uses artisans just in order to, uh, to go to the roots and say we are sustainable, big uh, magazines. Uh, they, they, they take our artisans that I know how poor, how difficult, how much commitment we are having with them, and then appear in Vogue uh, magazine in the in the ¿cómo se dice tapa? Cover. In the cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you say, my God, this industry use everything in a, a respect and respectable way. Yes, and also in that way, we we have uh, to rethink all this. Uh, all this system we, we created. And um, of course, artisans and, and producers with natural fibers, they have holistic models, models that respond to natural forces. Um, uh, they were created in, in a time where uh, men uh, understood that we are just guests, we are not hosts. Yes, and this I, I think is a, a very important statement we have to go to. Uh, we are invited, this energy we have to be alive, to be part of this wonderful uh, world, is just a gift that has a time. And in that time we have to leave uh, something uh, to improve our energy, this, this gift that we have. And so it's so important to go there and introduce and create this bridge between these ways of thinking, of working, of living with the fashion industry and with consumers. Because these uh, first are in the root of this industry. If we think this industry was created inspired in artisans, in their natural fibers. Uh, the design was just a way of showing and relating with God, with earth, with people, with uh, their cere ceremonies, yes? So from there we can learn and if we got this interchange of the tools we created in this world, in this economic uh, world we create, in this uh, magic world of ideas, yes, <laughs> the marketing, and we arrive to introduce these tools to make it happen, I think we are doing something so valuably, yes, together, because can inspire and can uh, give um, interchange with real things to uh, designers, professionals all around the world. And this is the feedback we receive every time we make uh, an event at UN, at an, an university, expert of sustainability. Designers around the world, they uh, write us letters in order to be part, to, uh, be part of this uh, virtuous cycle. So it is so important that now we have technology, yes? And technology can be a tool so uh, power in order to arrive directly to artisans and also to make them a own of their stories to relate. For example, uh, yesterday night I was uh, um, given a capacity building to uh, an artisan in Peru that she, Constantina Flores, I love her, maybe she is there. <laughs> and in order that they tell with this phone, they can tell their story. They can make the traceability, yes? And in, this is the next step that Hecho por Nosotros is looking for, to scale up the solutions that we found working hand by hand with Animana in order to create 
use the technology to empower small and medium firms in Latin America in order uh, Do we have some, I think somebody needs to mute. Thank you so much. All right, continue. <laughs> um, and uh, to create this strong bridge between them and the fashion industry, between them and designers that would like and, uh, and, look, and are looking for uh, to be part of this systemic change, but it's so difficult. And at the same time, we need consumers to be part of this, to be part of experiences, uh, to be uh, in contact with how these uh, communities live and what is happening in this industry. So I think responsible brands, responsible consumer, Consciousness consumers, we need uh, to not just to get the information, to give action. And in this Be Women, we have such a, a, a good opportunity. If we think in artisans' work, so many women that they live in their house and they have their materials, their culture, their ancestral technique as a way to develop to develop local economies that can be part of the global solutions we need as society. So, Hecho por Nosotros is looking for develop a, te a platform, a technology platform that will be growing and uh, putting on board small, medium brands, uh, uh, small and medium uh, firms, cooperatives and artisans and showing with all the ecosystem we have uh, worldwide. Yes, so this virtual circle is so important uh, to, uh, to think about the difficulties, the time that will take, and the seriousness that we have to work together, uh, international organizations, universities, designers, brands, consumers, all together, in this, uh, making this virtual circle alive. It's so important, as you say, we have to, again, we really have to think about all the different people that are part of, of the supply chain. And I think in many ways, this starts with conversations like these, but also in a more um, you know, thoughtful way, uh, the students who are coming in to study and learn about design and learn about the fashion business and those who are in marketing and communications about how to communicate, market uh, these types of things in a way that makes sense and uh, that, that gets the attention of, of the consumer so that not only are people buying into the idea of, of, of sustainability um, and, and really looking to make change within their lives, but also understanding what it is they get when they buy something more sustainable. Um, can you go to the next slide? And um, I think this sort of just again highlights a little bit of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, we have about, uh, I think we have about eight to 10 minutes, and I want to make sure that we go through a little bit about what Animana, what makes Animana so special. Um, can you give us a little bit uh, of some background about Animana, about the types of uh, clothing and accessories that you make and the materials that you use? Well, um, we... Uh, we work with the camellids. The camellids are the most, uh, I say, the most uh, finest fibers of the world, and they are not well known. When I began with an Imana project uh, 11 years ago, and I was going to international fairs, and buyers, oh, so nice this, but what is it? Where it comes from? And also, I think that today, if you stop people in New York, uh, among 10, maybe one, two, they know alpaca as a, a fiber that is as well as cashmere. So this industry uh, has so many tricks, let's say, as cashmere is very well known many times, uh, they buy a, a fiber that is uh, as good as, as uh, as, as cashmere and, and is sold, uh, is, buy in, is bought in a very low price without a, an authenticity of the fiber. And then it is mixed and the same happens between Guanaco and Vicuña. And 
Well, so it's so important to give a voice and all this year we have been ambassadors about this, the richness of these uh, fibers. One, one, can you, one important thing of this fiber is that it has a huge uh, palette of colors that are natural. And uh, this is something amazing. When you, when you find uh, the black, the grays, the black with uh, the, the top colors, the beige are so beautiful. And this in itself, it's a luxury of nature. And this industry sadly was requesting too much white fiber in order to mix and to, uh, to dye it. And so many of the uh, color species or, or uh, kinds of uh, alpacas and llamas uh, are, are almost lost. And one of the purposes is uh, to work on this, yes, and to give value to the black, to the grays, and, and to this great palette. And at the same time, this is an intelligent fiber. Of course, it's expensive because the qualities are enormous. And when it is uh, cold, gives gives you, although it's very light and very soft, gives a, a lot of warmth. And, and all the way around, when it is hot, it's, it's easy because breathe with you. Yes. And, it's a very long lasting uh, fire, fiber and it's so comfortable, not just for our clothing, also blankets, uh, for our sofa to, to be comfortable at home. Uh, it, it's really so beautiful. Sometimes I, I think it's the only luxury we have in this, in this world, yes, and in fashion and in, in products. These natural fibers that uh, with an intervention of design, respecting and, and empowering the ancestral techniques, gives product that they are so nice that uh, in my experience when I was at uh, international fairs, that uh, uh, buyers that are sometimes of big uh, houses are quite arrogant, they see Animana and they were, oh my God, who is doing this? <laughs> so beautiful. How they... But yes, because it's like our arrogance is lost. Yes, we, we, we take an, an attitude of humility uh, in front of these natural fibers, real are so beautiful. Um, well, of course that this, uh, the work of the artisans, when, when they are working, making the shans, uh, all, all the way, how they live with the animals, how they take care, all, all these stories that are around them, and the way they meet, it's so marvelous and gives also the, um, the possibility of being inspired and working with them and co-creating products that really are, are unique. So well, this, this is the way of Animana with native cotton that also is so marvelous and creates an ecosystem and it has in its seeds the natural uh, colors that are for uh, without any dye and create an ecosystem that allows so many things going on and uh, all these secrets that are in nature are so important for us, for human beings, and they have a sense and they have a potential and they have solutions and we are really destroying. If we see around the world artisans, sustainable producers of different fibers, all are over demand and they are uh, disappearing, yes? Everything going for a fast uh, fashion, for a um, unrespectable uh, ways of uh, behavior. And I think in this, big women, big courts are so important in the sense 
that we need to be together. It's not that when you are the CEO, you are uh, making your, doing your profession, you have to be divided and do things that you will never uh, do as a person. I think this is so important that we begin to, to put in market in, in a place. Maybe we are so uh, graceful to, to, to the successful of nowadays. And we need to look for other success, for other ways of uh, giving revenue to the society, and mostly in this moment. You know, one of the things that uh, if you go back 5, 10, even 15, 20 years ago is that people um, really thought of sustainable as being very granola and very hippie and not very fashionable. And I'm really excited about these next slides. And I think we can kind of just look through them as we're talking to see sort of the products that you've developed using both sustainable uh, approach to your design and to your production but also in, uh, incorporating the artisanship of these women that you've talked about and of these different groups that are very um, specific to where you live and specific to the world that you have grown up in that I think creates this beautiful authenticity um, and luxury um, that I think we, we sort of lack in this sort of hyper-branded world where everything is more about a logo than it is about these, these details. So maybe as you're sort of showing us these next few pictures, you can highlight a few of the key uh, ways that you approach design from um, just design in general, using these artisans as your inspiration. I, I think uh, we have a, a huge uh, manantial, how to say manantial, <laughs> it's like a pond of inspiring with artisans, with a way of spinning, which if in each place they spin the, uh, the materials in a different way, they wave in a different way. And this gives products that are absolutely uh, beautiful per se. Um, of course, uh, uh, it's not an easy task uh, to, to go ahead with uh, Animana, but every time I see something, I say, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and also uh, thinking about all uh, the impact, how women and also men and young people locally, they, they got in their culture, in their possibilities, a way of living and improving life and staying there. And also I see how many, here are some uh, collaborators that they got crazy to visit artisans, to have experience uh, with them. And this is so important, so important. If we lose all this, I think we, we are creating a world that will be very sad. <laughs> very, when, when we have an experience with nature, with real things, touch us so, so hard, so uh, in like a ray, let's say, and, and we are losing that. Uh, just creating this show of growing, consuming, don't thinking, all connected, all connected and all disconnected, no? Mm -hmm. So, well, it's, it's a huge moment in order to rethink and I think uh, things are going on in that way. We, um, yes. we spend so much time, I think, um, as I, I see that there are some designers and people who are part of the fashion industry on, the, on this uh, webinar. And I think we spend so much time trying to make things perfect, right? We're trying, I, I'm even thinking of food as well. We don't, you know, grocery stores don't have abnormal looking uh, oranges because they're afraid people won't buy them and they throw them out. And, and I'm just looking at this picture here that you have up and I'm thinking to myself, um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier about using the natural pigments of, of the materials, right? And also thinking about using just sort of the natural incongruities um, of the materials that you have, and they create something so unique like this, um, this blanket that you have here um, that you can't recreate and that it becomes something, a true luxury because no one else will have anything quite like it. Yes, and I think, well, in Animana we work 
hardly and takes a lot of time in order to obtain a product that can be, let's say, perfect and with a minimum error, yes, that gives us the opportunity of beauty, of human hand there, yes. And of course, in our blankets and in many of the artisanal and spun by hand products, each product is unique and its beautiness is infinite in itself. It's so beautiful. And of course, uh, we have all these flowers and all the, these plants and seeds all across uh, the Andes that gives marvelous colors. And we also uh, involve the uh, use of them in these lives, like uh, 50, 60 years, the, the anilines, they made a disaster in, in communities that uh, they, they die with that and um, such a fiber with that, like, oh, <laughs> terrible. So, well, a, a hard work in order to put in value all the natural uh, dyes and all these processes that are so important also to move because many times these are in the memory of Asian people, yes, that just with an experience you make like a workshop around one flower and so they began to uh, remember how they did it yes when they were young or how their parents and so these secrets are so important to obtain them and maintain it alive with new generations and slightly, there is a small movement in the communities. We arrive to work and to continue steadily with a, a commitment. So young people, they introduce uh, technology, uh, ideas, organization, and at the same time, they are taking these ancestral techniques and giving them a life again. Um, I want to make sure that we have time. You've, you've created a special one minute video that I wanted to make sure that we have time to show. But before we do that, you have a slide, um, just two more slides ahead if you don't mind, or if you can go one more slide ahead. I, I, there we go, oh, this one, perfect. I think, you know, uh, this is it perfect is just sort of showing this new value chain that, um, that you're proposing. Um, and that you're making work. And I think um, I'm also seeing a lot of people on the webinar that are part of this network that you've created um, and that are so excited to be part of something new where there is really value at each level where uh, people aren't getting left behind, uh, materials aren't getting left behind, say in the manufacturing uh, process or even um, in the retail process. Um, so as you're sort of getting that video ready to go, do you wanna speak to that a little bit and then we'll show the video? Yes, well, we talk a little bit about the value chain. If we think Animana has this value chain, we uh, select the best fiber, the best uh, producers, yes, and the best quality of these fibers. And design is a small intervention in order to make a contemporary product that uh, will be used in long time and uh, also gives an opportunity of designers to, to get this important of their profession and how they can be a tool of uh, change, of development, of changing life and, and creating bridge. Locally, uh, people, women, women are so important, young women locally, uh, that they work and they are part and how are so smart how every tool uh, you, you give uh, immediately is taken and uh, you create evolutions, I will say, not revolutions, evolutions, yes. We co-create evolutions. And um, well, in Animana, because I, I will go quickly with this value chain in Animana, hecho por nosotros, Animana, the commercialization, to give, to make this bridge to the uh, end, consumer, how it is an experience. I am so happy how people that know Sanimana then 
they love Animana. Every time they have to give a gift, so oh, they have a trip, someone that really loved, oh, I have to buy something in Animana, something that has a history. And well, this is a difficult area for us. It's not easy. We need to grow and for that, we, we really need uh, a, 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 to let know the work and to make it happen in a def different way. I am very like against all these systems of uh, making people crazy to buy. Uh, we would like to make this a message and a commitment, yes? And if we go through this uh, value chain with Hecho por Nosotros, they are, we work with natural fibers, how we can contribute for local uh, systems in order that this production of the fibers, they can be paid properly, they can give, a, can give a value added to these producers that give so much time for them. And many times they are paid nothing, yes and uh, how they can be introduced to the next step of the value chain, the producers and local communities, in order to get part uh, more value added of this. Uh, the sustainable design, how we create awareness around the world with universities, with people, how locally in Latin America, how designers, they are study, studying, studying this uh, career and they do not know about all the treasures we have, all the potential, all our um, identity, our culture, this iconography that we have so rich in order to create a fashion with identity that can be uh, used worldwide, yes? Uh, in capacity building, our work in Hecho por Nosotros is enormous uh, along this long experience, love, and, and so many professionals around. We have great tools in order to make this training and to transform. And also here in Hecho por Nosotros, I, wear, I go to the international uh, agencies. We are part of United Nations through our ECOSOL status consultative and as a great network of collaborators, economies, we have a business model, we have devel local development models that contribute insight uh, to these organizations and helps um, to create this bridge between local problems, local necessities, and international agencies. This world is so divided, and we need to create this bridge because when you are at an organization, at World Economic Forum, you have so many pressures, so many information, so many things. How you got the real information of what is going, what are the problems, how to solve it? In that uh, sense, we are working with World Economic Forum. We are so happy that in this moment, World Economic Forum has taken this theme as something really important. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, to co-create the solutions. And uh, they are looking for mm. solutions in order to give the importance of design as a tool of development. And here we are uh, really enthusiastic about this work. And I have to say that all this network in 10 years has been worldwide with collaborators that are so smart, so great, that they, they are so committed. And this uh, has been possible just in a collaborative way. If we think the importance to doing things different and, and where we are, yes, uh, it's so inspiring and, and invite everybody. And here in our group, I put artisans, women, the camelids, and the collaborators are the, the main actors of all this. Yes. 
So let's let's uh, move to the video. And while the video's uh, playing, if you want to write down some of the words uh, that can be included in the word cloud about actions that you would like to take around sustainability, that would be wonderful. And then we can take some um, questions. And and I also I know that Adriana has a few. Uh, ways, actions that she believes that we can take uh, to be more sustainable in our actions. So let's watch the video. Thank you. We have a problem with the music. Ah, porque vos no tenés the music. No. You can hear or not? Yeah, we can hear. Yes. Actually, we can't hear it now. You oh. know. Ah, entonces vamos a sacar el micrófono. If you want. No, ponele mute. <laughs> So it's only two minutes. Thank you for your patience to everybody. Hmm. Maybe we can make the link available to, um, oh, here we go. All right, wonderful. Sorry about the sound. Maybe we can make a link available to everyone on the webinar that they um, can and watch that um, on their own. I, if you don't mind, um, Adriana, going to the slide about take action, um, I think there's two slides and maybe we can go toggle back and forth between them, but I wanna make sure that um, some of the questions that have been asked uh, on the forum, are, uh, we, we can answer for those questions and uh, have a little bit of a dialogue. Well, I... Let's make sure you're back. There you are. All right, wonderful. <laughs> um, so I think the easiest way to do this, Lara, unless you uh, disagree, is that I can read some of the questions from the uh, chat, and then if, if... Or is it easier to have people pop on with their sound? Yeah, the, the best way to do it, we're still recording, is that... Uh, maybe Adriana can share what is a, a call to action that you can inspire the women and men in this uh, webinar to do regarding of what 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 is an ambassador for Hecho por Nosotros, okay. and then we can move forward to the questions. Okay, so great. Is, uh, Thanks. I um, to... Well, one one way of being an ambassador of Hecho por Nosotros is being an active part. Of course, we need to take action. And of course, there are different ways of commitment, of interest, of time, and etc., and are all welcome. Uh, regarding as consumers, 
what we think is so important to understand all these issues and the different sides of this uh, fashion industry and how can we uh, active part of this transformation. For that, we need information and we need uh, to be able to transmit this information to others. Uh, we invite all to take webinars that we will, we have been giving all this year and we will continue and we are so happy to do it with big women. <coughs> uh, regarding uh, all this uh, information, the social, the environment, the process, the linear models, the circular economy, how this fashion industry has, can be transformed. So uh, we make a call for ambassadors all around the world to get the, the webinars and information. And uh, of course, we have boys at UN, at different organizations at ITC, UNESE, where professionals that would like to invest uh, time to, to co-create and to learn with us and give boys uh, they have an open door and all projects that are doing efforts in sustainable fashion, really in creating a systemic change, they can use our platform to, uh, to contact, to spread their boss, uh, voice. And of course, there are so many ways of being a consumer more conscious. Uh, when we buy to think what we need, for what, uh, how we wash with our, our clothes, well, all, all these uh, like, uh, different uh, behaviors that can be changed for better, uh, we can uh, learn and discuss in order to then have the force uh, to implement and to change uh, habits that uh, will help for, for less uh, damage to the environment and to other people. And so important to consumers to be aware in order this industry is responsible of a, a great value added. It is one of the richest industry, let's say. And, and so uh, maybe because of this asymmetry of information, uh, they grow, grow, and, and then it was difficult, and it is difficult to stop. But we as consumers, if we are demanding, uh, there is technology, blockchain, that we can really uh, request the story of the product. And if we request this to brands, the movement and the, the importance of traceability will grow. We are working with International Trade Center in European Union, in a group UNESE with experts, many of the collaborators of Hecho Por Nosotros are part. And how can we make traceability and transparency happen in real way in this fashion industry? And also take care about greenwashing propaganda, yes? Uh, I, I think we need uh, to go for another system. We, we really need to go for another system. So uh, do not get this as a, another way of selling more of the same because that is the worst panorama we can have, yes. <laughs> Adriana, can you show the slide called Slow Fashion? Um, it's a couple slides before and I think we can keep it up on that slide for a few minutes while we're having a conversation because I think these are so simple and yet they make such a difference. And I think, you know, we're talking about major systemic change in supply chain and value chain, but there's things that we can do um, as consumers right off the bat that we can make a difference almost immediately, whether it's uh, buying locally, buying um, secondhand. Um, I know there was a question or a little bit of a conversation going on about how the prices of sustainable products are often very high. Um, there's a lot of uh, studies out there that show that actually people tend to buy a lot more uh, and actually spend about the same when they're buying fast fashion. But I think that these uh, here, even just washing your clothes less often, um, thinking about the detergents that you use, uh, it's not so much different than how we think about food, is it, really, in terms of how 
we shop locally and, and shop more healthfully and we think about how we wash our foods and things, it's the same thing that goes for clothes. Um, so I don't know if you want to add to that a little bit, but I think that this is a great place to, to start some dialogue about um, um, what you're all thinking as part of this webinar and some of the information uh, that you might like to, to get from Adriana on this webinar. So if you want to, if you don't want your voice heard, you can um, type in the group uh, chat there a question. I'm happy to ask Adriana that. If uh, you do want to um, pop on and ask a question, I think we have a few minutes that we can do that. One question that just came in just a little bit ago for Adriana is, is that the supply chain that you're working to build with all of these partners, is it only available to you, um, uh, to Animana, uh, or is it something that if another designer wants to be part of, um, can they be, and how do they, do, how do they go about doing that? Well, we are uh, working on looking funds for a um, technological platform that will uh, get alive all this ecosystem and reinforce and invite much more providers that work in sustainable ways in order to offer their services and be in touch with all these uh, designers, brands, and etc. And so this can create and reinforce an ecosystem in Latin America around sustainability. There are so many uh, small, medium firms working in good, with good practices, with sustainable practices, that uh, they, they have a hard work uh, to go to the market to show their way. So we work with them in how to make this traceability, this transparency through technology, and how they can offer their services. And for that, we uh, are looking for fund for an Im impact investor and partners. Uh, meanwhile, we are doing our efforts, but uh, um, everything is a lot of uh, demand, energy, and organization in order to do it properly. So, well, this is the next step that uh, Hecho por Nosotros is looking for. And I think it's so important because Latin America, as the way of living is improving, this industry is growing and is growing at a rate, and at a very big rate, a bigger rate than uh, in other parts of the world. So if we do not uh, put inside in, in prepare this uh, base of sustainability, uh, in good conditions in order to be part of the fashion industry and consumers be awareness about this, uh, really the damage that we can produce will be bigger and bigger in the next year. So it's so important and at the same time as uh, the world is looking a lot about Africa, let's say, or the power world is looking uh, we really need uh, to create a force and attention regarding this fashion industry in Latin America. And this is uh, our next step through the Foro de Moda Circular Latino America that we have been working all these 10 years and has so many actors and so Oops. many... Yes. Unfortunately, we're, we're out of time. So we don't have um, a lot of uh, time to take more questions other than one more. Um, I do see um, Natalie, I just wanted to make sure I got your question because I know you've been waiting. Let me make sure uh, that I have that. Um, I'm gonna have to scroll back too far, Natalie. So we'll have to, uh, maybe I can answer that uh, sort of separately. But the one question that keeps coming up is on around the price of clothing, of sustainable clothing, and also sort of the secondhand market. Um, maybe we can kind of close with that because I think that is a, a, a buzzword in the industry right now, this idea of buying secondhand, whether it's on a more corporate site like The Real Real or um, some of these smaller uh, shops that are, that are popping up. Can you just speak a little bit about price and the secondhand market? 
Well, um, I think the second hand market is an important issue, but also also there we need transparency, yes, mm -hmm. because many times the same uh, fashion industry is doing the, the left of pieces and etc. So we we really need to, to go for more transparency and tools that can show us all the story of each product and the impact and and everything. And regarding uh, sustainable fashion and prices, in Nimana we have very good prices for the goods, we, the products we produce and how we do an enormous effort to, uh, to involve more communities and to give them this breed. And I think that we have to consume different and in that way you uh, you don't need to spend so much money. As I say, I have sweaters, shawls, and everything for so many years, and you always look uh, perfect, let's say, yes. <laughs> it's, um, thank you so much for that answer. I think, um, you know, I think all of, the, there's so much, there's such, such a complex topic, and I think that just uh, what you're doing in this area and really thinking about it holistically and from a, and a, from a pure systems point of view is so important. And um, I know that there's a lot of people on this webinar today that are students that want to think about sustainability as they go into their careers. There's also people I see uh, that are trying to bring more sustainability into the businesses that they already have. And then we also have people who are just consumers who are trying to think about um, all of this a bit differently. Um, I think I want, you know, one thing I want to say is, is that part of this transparency is that I think there is a concern about prices and sustainability because I think the reality is, is we're so out, uh, we don't understand what it takes to make anything anymore. We're just so used to buying something for, you know, $20 and not really understanding that there was a human person involved in making that by hand. And it's so that it's not expensive, it's just readjusting, I think, all of our ideas of what it is that we're purchasing. Um, and I think what Animana is doing is, is really uh, wonderful. I have to say, in closing, um, I actually <laughs> received this scarf from a dear friend of mine, Sass Brown, who is a very big proponent of sustainability. Um, and uh, I was sharing that with her today. So this is an Animana scarf that I received as a gift. <laughs> You know, yeah. a, good way, a good way to share secondhand is to also share these wonderful pieces that can continue to live on and on. Um, yeah. There's nothing you know, wrong with that. We don't have to keep buying. There are so, so yeah. many beautiful things yes. in the world. That's, well, that's yeah. why to close, I think that behavior and consciousness that is conscious in action is the, the most important um, words we have uh, to think about. And, and to realize how our behavior is part of the big problems of the world that uh, finally we are part of them and, and really put us in a very dangerous uh, situation to us and the next generations. Thank you so much. And I want to uh, invite everyone to visit Adriana on her websites. Um, they were up earlier and you can also follow her on Instagram. If anyone wants to get in touch with me, I'm at Parsons School of Design in New York, so you can find me there. Um, and just really thank you so much for sharing, sharing uh, this um, hour and a half with everyone. I think it's been such a, an amazing conversation. Well, thank you so much, uh, Adriana and Josh. This has been a truly inspiring uh, webinar uh, with, a, you know, with more than 150 people registered practically 50 in on the call today it's been really very inspiring the questions asked because we believe that the fashion industry imagine the power it has to convey messages of sustainability and change because you already create a lot of of, of a messaging through marketing and so forth so on that note i would like to end and thank you again and mention to everybody that there is a few webinars coming up like ethics matters in spanish eh, la inteligencia social y empoderamiento de las mujeres bajo la agenda eh, 2030 by alejandra bandolini eh, women leading businesses uh, Purp with purpose and impact with Fleur Heinz. And um, the third one, March the 17th, Benefit Corporation, the impact of our, in our economy 
And this is a very important uh, webinar because as we all know, legislation can change societies. And this one is one that is doing that. We have also on sustainable tourism and and marcas sustentables in Spanish. So, and the one uh, that I really want to hear a lot is the one on uh, non-flick, the art of everyday peacemaking. That is a methodology, a three-step process that really helps uh, companies uh, become sustainable. So on that note, I want you to all uh, take a, a few seconds, take a piece of paper and a pen and write down the one thing that you will change or you will act upon based on what you heard today. Every time we hear something so inspiring, we need to act immediately. And I hope with this, I thank you for all for being part of this call and, and hope you take a lot of actions because there were a lot more than one thing to do, but uh, just do one and do it now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.